I'm very pleased to have with us an expert. In fact, he's such an expert that I don't think I fully understand what he does. He works in a hospital fighting cancer through human genome. Okay, let him explain it. <laughs> Let's listen to him. He's Ashish Srivastav. Over to you, Ashish. Hi, thank you, Subodh. Um, I really, really appreciate it. It's an excellent platform where I can get opportunity to speak. Um, I'll start with myself, that what I do, and it's uh, nothing very special. It's just a specialized field, which is a combination of uh, biology and informatics. So I'm a bioinformatician by training, by PhD. Um, and I work in a hospital in Norway. Um, and we work on human genome and other sequencing of other organism. And I also work on, uh, uh, let's say, finding genomic insight, not only in cancer, but in for other diseases, you know. And so, for example, so any genomic aspects, you know, diseases like cancer, TB, rare genetic diseases, even COVID, that was trendy sometime back, isn't it? So, but then I have also many interests. So my interests include whistling. Uh, I've been uh, a stage performer since uh, many years. So I do when I get chance or an opportunity. Um, I also cheat on biology sometimes by reading physics. And that's been uh, since <laughs> long. And I like uh, reading uh, poetry and philosophy. And uh, I also write sometimes. So then everything goes on, you know, with uh, with the hospital job and with family and other passions in my life. And today, I think I want to talk about a few things which I have been kind of meditating on since some time, trying to talk to other people about it, you know, uh, trying to find a better way to do it and things I really think about lately. So... As I would say that born and brought up, educated, did my first job in India, um, and then moving to Europe after a few jobs and you know acquiring aptitude for research, I moved to Europe on uh, for PhD scholarship. So then this learning starts with PhD. So PhD is like uh, army training, I must say. You become self-dependent and you have to fight lots of battles in career, in personal life, etc. But I want to, today, I think the time allows me to cover at least two thoughts in my mind. One is that what uh, a bioinformatics perspective of cancer. And then there is something which kind of, you can say, relate to it somehow. We'll see. So for example, cancer, as we understand that it's an uncontrolled growth of uh, of the cell in the tissue or body, and we know then it proliferates, it loses control, it, it, uh, it destroys your system immunity, and then even, eventually the subject, the person, uh, loses the battle to life. And we understand that these are not only, uh, so these cell proliferation or this cancer are derived from many, many things. There are many reasons, many causes. So one could be genetic that we are born with. Some are external factors, some are lifestyle, our genetic makeup, as I said, you know, our exposure to pollution, to radiations, to toxic toxins in our food, stress is one of the reasons they stay. So that really disturbs um, the system, um, the harmony in the body. And that and mix of everything is definitely okay. a cumulative reason okay. for someone to get cancer. Yeah. Um, so we know that now that the can uh, understanding in cancer has improved a lot 
and there are better medicine, there are better screenings, there are better prevention, there are good knowledge about healthy lifestyle. But still, the battle is still on. We know that by, I remember statistics from 22, which says that we, there were 19 million people, one nine million people added, which were, which had cancer and over 10 million perished. Uh, and this is a huge number globally. And when we talk about India, one in 1,000 person is going to get cancer at one point or, or is actually very likely to get. Bioinformatics in cancer, for example, what I have been exposed to, we don't deal with patient. We deal with the data. Mm -hmm. Mostly in, in my discipline, we work on sequencing data. So when we... For example, we, you know, for example, breast cancer, you do BRCA testing, whether this some gene is mutated or not, because mutation in one gene could be um, a cause or actually could initiate some proliferation or, you know. Um, so in bioinformatics, there have been a lot of development in last 10 years, or at, at least how I'm seeing it. So there are some aspect which we can uh, read about or think about um, these days for better understanding and which are leading for a good treatment in cancer, for example, precision medicine. So which is customized to your genetic makeup. Everyone is unique as we know. But uh, I'm very certain happy to hear population that. is more- Ashish, I'm very happy to hear that. <clears throat> Not because I okay. have a need for it, but because I feel that too much of medication protocol is driven by the central tendency of a large sample. So it works on the average or the median, and that's what you get. Whether you're far from the median or not close to it, then you don't know what you are getting. So what you're saying is very helpful that it is actually going to look at the person. Yes. So that's been really crucial, and especially in Europe, <clears throat> where health system allows or at least give the chance or the prospect of sequencing more uh, for the patient, which means that you can get actually very good insight on that which treatment could be chosen, which uh, chemotherapy will work better. So there are, of course, we are not going to delve into a bioinformatics session about it, but uh, but understanding this, that people are working on it, governments are funding on it. Um, and this been going on in India as well. And there are a good amount of literature for precision medicine. And this is a near future scenario that we will get a better picture. So it can be, a, of course, not only full human genome sequencing, which is still very expensive, but also certain genes, which we know we have knowledge of that are part in the cycle of a particular cancer. Then, of course, there is this big data analysis um, where you have vast amount of data, you have good amount of uh, biomarker genes, you know, which are important. And now using computer models, you know, artificial intelligence, et cetera, now you can uh, find therapeutic targets in lesser cost and in lesser time. And these both are important when it comes to cancer. Um, Immunotherapy has, uh, for example, when we talk about immunotherapy, so predicting response of your medicine, of the treatment, uh, tumor mutational load, for example, or immune cell infiltration patterns, et cetera. These things are, I mean, they, they sound difficult, but if, but these are the things, the data now which we are capable of computing was not possible before. Yeah. And drug discovery, of course, drug discovery, as we know that you have potential thousands of targets sometimes, uh, sorry, target of uh, thousands of uh, potential drugs, and we don't know which one to choose. And when we start one by one, it will take years to find something. But now with computer simulations, we can do easily in, in lesser time. You only need to run the model of a, you know, uh, of a drug. So... And then finally, integration of everything in biology. 
the knowledge, you know, like your someone's genome, you know, their proteome, their gene expression, you know, meditation, medications they are taking, or um, all kind of meta information that will include their, you know, if they are into any other diseases, if there was any family history, you know, and all kind of clinical metadata that can be combined and good model are being generated to predict these. Being said this, um, so when we know that there is this cancer and there are other diseases, there is COVID, um, and the role of bioinformatician is not in the lab, but at the desk with computer and server. I mean, of course, he talks to doctors. Yeah. To scientists in the lab and etc., right? But this is to understand that bioinformatics was new some years back, but now it's part, it's a core part of biological research. And, okay. and I find it actually really working out for me because in COVID, when everyone was home, I was still, you know, having good amount of work to do from home. And, and we were still working, you know, yeah. in a hospital and my environment. So hospital never closes, right? So, but we had yeah. liberty to work from home as well. Yeah. Um, Anyways, and um, other things which I think that as a as a as a scientist, you always try to 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 learn more or to connect other things which are, for example, not biology, or that in which way we are connected, which impact the life of other people, or society, or in planet, or basically actually in anywhere in universe. I mean, I'm not talking about any kind when particles are uh, related to each other from light years away not but but you know um, let's say a larger picture of a quantum entanglement which means that everything which we are doing or thinking or working on they are connected and it affects us uh, and and to the other person on some other part of the globe and this, when we think that why there is so much, because we know more, there is more information, so we see more suffering, right? We see more cancer, for example. Of course, there is more awareness. But then it's also that if there is something which is really increasing the suffering. So there are there are those things. And I mean, it's a, it's a big topic to cover in a small uh, talk. But I feel that it is important for younger people to understand something really basic, okay. which may, which may, uh, I think we do not think about it enough these days. And I've been talking to people among my peers, you know, my yeah. friends, and also younger population, uh, which is about a balance between consuming and creating. Okay. It has nothing to do with uh, biology or bioinformatics, but in general, a very holistic approach on a human life. And um, here, I say when I say consuming, which means that just taking, taking from society, taking from resources, you know, and uh, without giving back, um, without giving back to the society. And this promotes kind of this passive existence of ourself um, and it's focuses which which means that actually we are focused on personal gratification only and this kind of causes chaos we are not designed for this as human we think that we are intelligent people who understand nature we, we think that we kind of with our knowledge we can really understand what is going on in nature but that doesn't mean that we have right or power to just consume and not create enough. Um, so this overlooks the importance of uh, contribution and growth and possibly hindrance to the societal progress, when I say. And uh, which, which also, because at this uh, level of, or when say at this stage of my career, you, you start thinking about what you can do better in your job, in your life, you know, in, in your social life or family life. 
Yeah. And then when I was saying that we are overlooking the importance of com contribution and growth and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, which may hinder the societal progress, which means that it, it is also could be a big reason for which constantly keep us empty or unfulfilled or unsatisfied. So, so for example, just consuming mindlessly when I say, you know, like this, uh, like shopping, you know, or to going to fancy restaurant or, you know, watching uh, TV news, uh, just lying half dead on your couch, I don't know. And, uh, or, you know, just what is what you think is good for you or, you know, or your self-image on social media. This is, it, this is some kind of consumption. The basic consumption is, of course, something that, you know, we, we eat, yeah. we entertain ourselves, etc. But then I'm, talking about something which is has has a larger entropy to it and then creating means you know creating could be anything actually um cooking your own meal for example doing some gardening you know writing an article writing a piece of program or code mm -hmm. uh, you know or or you know founding an ngo mentoring you uh, as we to, so could you um, give an example of something that you admire that has happened or something that you have done? Um, well, yes, there are many things. I'm, I'm an optimist, you know. I mean, uh, well, I, I understand that I have been privileged in many things that, and uh, and I want that someone to not do those mistakes which makes you take more time to achieve something so mentorship is a good way to teach you know the 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 bitter experience and being involved in uh, in freedom employability academy for some years and then also there are a couple of other ngos i've been associated with and it's been really um, <clears throat> grateful i found The, the consumption part there is this self a lot and lot of ideas of young people in india which is which is uh, tremendously great and and like i said that i've been into science so i see a lot of those creations happening that people passionately working on something to solve the problem not because someone of them is um, you know, they want to do it, but they know that that's the only way in future. So so those part where we have to create constantly, and of course, there we do, right? Um, for example, going to a shelter home or, you know, starting a community or a group where you create, you know, you recite poetry, you know, volunteering in a Gurdwara, for example, or a dog shelter, you know, or teaching what you know, that that we do a lot right and uh, so those kind of that is creating okay so but then i also find a larger population having an imbalance of creating and consumption a balance is vital i feel um so both for fulfilling life and uh, for a thriving society creating fast uh, creativity fosters innovation right and uh, problem solving or you know cultural enrichment and finally satisfaction to yourself i know you mentioned fea i'm glad that you know you know that i am also an fea mentor yes <clears throat> and it is uh, let me just make a public appeal here uh, that fea is expanding and needs more mentors and uh, they are expanding to new states and uh, it's very much needed, West Bengal and Odisha. And we will need mentors who speak Bengali and Uriya. So let's have them because it's one of the best programs. What is your experience, Ashish, with them? FEA has been uh, great for me, actually. Um, I started five years back. And uh, I think I had like 14 batches so far. And... And so initially I was, when there were no rural batches because they are dividing, uh, di divided now into urban and rural batches, right? So I was 
uh, first batches were in Delhi, you know, uh, around and in cities. And then this rural uh, batches and system came. And they not, because it's not only about giving you your time, time, because actually you are not giving much time. And that is what I tell people that why it's so great, you know, that you are only giving a very small time and which can really uh, be helpful for someone because all this potential people, this young people are looking for is someone to believe in them and just to share stories. And of course you can, you know, enrich it with your knowledge and experience, you know, and how you connect to them. So I've been really good at connecting to them. I would say that I'm, I'm, I'm good at it. I'm really proud of it. I made many friends and uh, I'm still talking to the people from my old batch and actually to the mentor and also some of the siblings who were not at FEA. So, and they keep telling me about their progress in their uh, career. So it's, it's really makes me feel happy. And I see that they have brilliant ideas. They're really hardworking. So when they know that there is this, uh, there is something to discuss, they reach out to me and I feel really grateful for that. I think, I mean, there is, there is no value I can put to it. So FE has, has given me uh, a new dimension of self-existence. Okay. And this is extremely satisfying. And I always um, try to, to keep in touch, you know, and try to be, actually, I'm, I'm also trying to learn. And this is actually an appeal from me as well, that if we have a little amount of time, we should try, you know, mentoring the kids who really need it. Because, because basically, we have to become the change we want to see, right? Yeah. Um, so that's that's part of creation, I would say, and that's part of uh, earning some satisfaction on what you do. Um, because, of course, but we are working on at work in science. It will come to public in some time. It is it's not like something which will come tomorrow right it, it takes time but mentorship and program like fea they have immediate impact and and you see it as well and i will take your word that the, um that we need mentor who speak odia or bengali so i will uh, have a word around with the speaker and native speakers um i was telling about this work life imbalance um only not only put us to health risk, but also has unrooted us from relationship with nature. And mindless consumption has made us less um, empathetic towards people, towards grass, grassroots. I mean, it's it's, if you think about it, that there is a, a general, a large mass of people who are, who really want to do something, but they do, they do feel that they do not have time for it. And, and they are not able to take care of very thing, which include their health, their stress level, their work life balance. So, you know, so when we come to this part, when we address to young people which uh, which have a lot of potential to to change everything around them and which are working really hard this is important to stay connected to their basic that they have to still have to remember to keep creating mm -hmm. instead of uh, just working this has been uh, me what i was thinking about and anything so both we you want me to? No, I don't suggest talking to anybody. It's what you want to talk about. <laughs> Anything else you want to add? Yeah. Um, I would say that research has been also a one big issue that we, we talk about, about brain drain from India, you know. and uh, But there are many scholarships in India as well. And, and, and I chose to compete for 
for European scholarship because that that seems to be better financially and the exposure. Um, but there is also this awareness which comes with it that how to pursue your research outside India. Um, I think in cities and in bigger universities, people know, but when, when I talk to people who are are in science and they want to do research. So there are those things that we also talk about. And then bioinformatics seems to be a very new field for them. So so I like to talk about the uh, life of a bioinformatician definitely. And I want to tell them that how great it is that no matter where you work, bioinformatician is a, uh, is a, is a good person to be, is a good researcher to be. A little bit of trouble with the a... internet. Okay. All right. Yeah. I think now it's clear. Okay. Anything else? Any final words from you? Um. No, not really. I really wish that it it reaches the audience which it is aimed for. Yeah. I will okay. be very happy today. Okay, uh, thank you so much then. Uh, great to hear uh, that you feel that you uh, are on a track to achieve things and that you are also on a track to give back at a fairly young age. You know, most people don't think about it at the age that you are thinking of. And you've been giving back to FEA for so many years. That's indeed uh, quite an achievement, I must say. And I'm very glad that you are here. And maybe we'll catch up with you in a year to see how you're doing. But till then, let's say bye to the viewers. Thank I'll you. be back with another young person or an expert soon. Bye till then.